The Convair F-106 Delta Dart was the main all-weather interceptor jet of the U.S. Air Force for almost 20 years. Designed from scratch as the so-called, quote, ultimate interceptor, pilots would reportedly fight each other to fly it. It had one mission, and it had to be fast. With a sleek body and missiles tucked in an internal weapons bay, it could reach speeds over 1,500 miles per hour to intercept the Soviet Union's long-range bombers. And as one bizarre incident would show, it could sometimes fly and land on its own. Genesis. The Delta Dart began in 1949 as Project WS-201A. The plan called for a fighter interceptor jet capable of carrying air-to-air -air guided missiles with an all-weather search and fire control radar, all while being able to reach supersonic speeds. For the weapons guidance, the Hughes Aircraft Company was awarded a contract in 1950 to develop a radically new fire control system. In theory, the system would be capable of automating many of the plane's flight and attack functions. A mock-up with the planned layout of the MX-1179 fire control prototype, renamed as the MA-1, was approved in December 1955. With sensors, it was essentially a 2,500-pound computer, although the prototype was touted in a radio and TV news article as being, quote, small enough to fit into a 21-inch table model television cabinet. The airframe would need to be built around it. The contract for the actual airframe was presented to Lockheed, Republic, and Convair. Convair won the proposal because it was closely related to the earlier development of the Delta Wing XF-92A. This experimental design would eventually be incorporated into the F-102 Delta Dagger, F-106 Delta Dart, B-58 Hustler, and the F-2Y Sea Dart. The Air Force and managers at Convair were convinced that the Delta Wing configuration was the best answer to issues that usually complicated supersonic flight. Delta Wing designs went as far back as World War II when they were first proposed by Germany's Alexander Lippisch. The jet was initially an improved derivative of the F-102 Delta Dagger, with the designation F-102B. The Dagger was supposed to be able to fly at supersonic speeds from its inception, but problems plagued its development. Eventually, it underwent such extensive changes that in June 1956, the redesigned version finally emerged with a new name. Confident that the aircraft's design would accommodate the new weapons system, an extended production contract was sent out. Often referred to as the Ultimate Interceptor, it had the primary mission of shooting down enemy bomber aircraft. It became the last specific interceptor in the U.S. Air Force. The Air Force had wanted the interceptor to be operational by 1955. Still, by the end of 1952, it was already clear that neither the engine nor the fire control system would realistically be ready by then. The program would run into additional delays and trouble. Supersonic Ejection the Delta Dart's ejection seats proved to be one immediate problem. The first model fitted to earlier models of the F-106 was a small variation of the seat used by the F-102, called the Weber Interim Seat. It was a catapult that used an explosive to propel it away from the aircraft, but it was inadequate for ejections at supersonic speeds. The Convair Industry Claw Escape System Committee replaced the Weber Interim Seat. It was designed with a supersonic ejection in mind, as the F-106 was expected to reach Mach 2 performance. But the ejection process proved too complicated for pilots, and some unsuccessful attempts at ejection even resulted in tragedy. The third and final seat for the Delta Dart was the Weber 00 rocket catapult seat. Weber Aircraft Corporation designed a seat able to operate at 690 miles per hour. The reasoning was that high-altitude supersonic ejections in the Delta Dart would be rare. Ejections at low altitudes and low speeds were deemed more likely. The Weber 00 seat was determined to be good enough, and was fitted to the F-106 after 1965. Design and Power The Delta Dart was explicitly designed as an interceptor, powered by the powerful Pratt & Whitney J-7517 engine. It was also amongst the first aircraft to have semi-autonomous military weapon platforms. The F-106A had a length of 70.7 .7 feet, and a wingspan of 36.29 feet. Similar to the F-102, the F-106 was designed without a gun or provision for carrying bombs. The Delta Dart had its missiles hidden in an internal weapons bay for a cleaner supersonic flight. The Hughes MA-1 electronic fire and control system worked simultaneously with the semi-automatic ground environment defense system. It took control over the plane right after takeoff and guided it to a proper altitude and later attack position. This system enabled the aircraft to lock and fire the enemy's weapons and return the jet to its airbase. The pilot would then take over control for landing. 
Some armaments that were compatible with the Delta Dart included the Douglas Air 2A Genie rocket with a nuclear warhead and the AIM-4 Falcon missiles. The Six. The first Convair F-106 finally flew in late December 1956, and deliveries to the Air Force began in 1959, but ended only a year later. In December 1959, Major Joseph Rogers set a world speed record aboard a Delta Dart with 1,525.96 miles per hour at 40,500 feet of altitude. That same year, Charles Myers also flew an F-106 at 1,544 miles per hour. Initial testing revealed problems with performance, engines, and avionics, which threatened to shut down the F-106 program entirely. But rather than pull the plug on the Delta Dart, the Air Force decided to order substantially fewer of them than initially planned. The initial F-106A request was reduced from 1,000 aircraft to only 277, plus 63 two-seat dual-control F-106Bs, outfitting 14 squadrons and a training unit. The reduced order also considered the ever-evolving Soviet threat, which had shifted from an earlier emphasis on bombers to ballistic missiles. During its long operational life, the F-106 held the record for having the lowest single-engine aircraft accident record in all of Air Force history. Even today, the Delta Dart could hold its own in the fighter training and combat area against current jets, and its speed record for a single-engine jet still stands, quite an accomplishment for a plane that's over 60 years old. The Delta Dart served in the US, Alaska, and Iceland, as well as in Germany and South Korea for brief periods. While in service, the F-106's official name, Delta Dart, was rarely used, as it was universally known as the Six. Although the Delta Dart was contemplated for service in Vietnam, it never saw combat. The Canadian government briefly considered purchasing some, but it was never officially exported to foreign users. After resolving its initial problems, particularly its faulty ejection seat, its exceptional performance made it very popular amongst the Air Force pilots. The F-106 was continuously updated, with improved avionics, modified wings, an infrared search system, an arrestor hook for landing emergencies, and even streamlined supersonic wing tanks. Initial air-to-air -air combat testing suggested that the Delta Dart was a fair match for the F-4 Phantom II in a dogfight. It had a superior high-altitude turn performance and better maneuverability. But the Phantom II had a better radar, which was operated by an additional crewman, and could carry up to four radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrow and four infrared AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. The AIM-4 Falcon missiles, which the F-106 carried, were at a disadvantage in comparison. The Six would likely have not fared well in Vietnam dogfights. In the early 70s, several F-106s were upgraded in a project that involved giving the Delta Dart a new canopy without a metal bracing, improving the pilot's visibility. In 1981, the F-15A Eagle started replacing the F-106. Some of those aircraft were converted into drones and changed their names to QF-106A. Six Delta Darts were passed on to NASA for experiments. A test between 1979 and 1991 used a modified F-106 in research programs for maneuverability improvements in jets with supersonic engines. NASA engineers modified a Delta Dart for the purpose of lightning strike research. Between 1980 and 1986, the F-106 was struck over 700 times without damage. The Eclipse Project, which ran in the late 90s, used six F-106s modified into drones. The project's main objective was to tow a modified QF-106 aircraft with a C-141A transport aircraft, all while still flying. The test proved the possibility of towing and launching a space launch vehicle from behind a tow plane. The F-106 remained in service in several USAF and Air National Guard units. The last Delta Dart was retired from the 119th Fighter Interceptor Squadron in 1988. Cornfield Bomber The infamous Cornfield Bomber has become a staple of U.S. Air Force lore and the most famous Delta Dart of all time. On February 2, 1970, the Iron Men, three F-106s with the Fighter Interceptor Squadron, took off from Maelstrom Air Force Base near Great Falls, Montana for an air combat maneuvering sortie. During the mission, one of the aircraft departed from the controlled flight and began flat spinning. The aircraft's pilot, Captain Gary Faust, wasn't able to return to controlled flight and had no option but to eject. But the story didn't end there. The aircraft's weight and balance were altered during Captain Gary's ejection, so much so that the plane recovered from the spin by itself and resumed into a stable flight. The now unmanned F-106 flew off on its own. 
All the squadron pilots assumed it had crashed somewhere beyond their range, exploded, and a shallow crater full of debris was somewhere around in the Montana countryside. But the plane had defied all logic and belly landed in a snowy field near the town of Big Sandy. The local sheriff received a call about an airplane with its engine still running, sitting in a cornfield. He advised to let the engine run until it ran out of gas. The Sacramento Air Logistics Center at McClellan Air Force Base in California dispatched a depot team to the unlikely scene. After assessing the situation, the team discovered the wings of the airplane were still in flying condition. They were removed, and the rest of the plane, including the fuselage, which had sustained minor damage, was disassembled and sent back to California by train. The aircraft was repaired and eventually returned to service. It's currently on display at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. <laughs>